What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back to more crumbling for Umazula, and it's time to go take on a hidden boss. Now, before we do this, we are going to want to spend all of our runes. This is definitely the kind of boss that's going to give you a run for your money. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, there we go. 6,000. I'm fine if I lose 6,000. But head on down. You might even want to send this elevator back up in the event that you die. This guy can, this guy can pack a punch. Uh, we are about to go fight the very well hidden Dragon Lord. Fun fact about the Dragon Lord your boy actually had the world first kill of him. It was pretty nutty. Found this guy at the end of the Let's Play series on stream, and when we looked it up afterwards, Steam showed 0% worldwide achievements besides my own. And then afterwards, someone was like, what about Xbox and PlayStation? And we looked, and the trophy dates I saw for those were also after my own. So, as far as I know, I believe I actually had the world first kill on him. Which, kill aside, honestly, the discovery of this guy was just amazing. Because he's by far, I think, the coolest dragon we've ever seen in a From Self game. But, anyway, enough of me voting about myself. Uh, head on down. Now, before you go into this, uh, a couple things. So the guy's weak to thrust, and ironically enough, he's also weak to lightning and fire. I know, you know he's a dragon that's like shooting lightning all over, but yes, he's weak to lightning. A um, couple things we need to look out for. He has this thing where he'll turn into a cloud and try to come at you and smash. We'll point that out when it's happening. You want to roll through that. His beam breath can take you out. You want to be very careful about that. Um, Tish is going to be excellent here because... She has the HP reduction, which is great against the boss with a ton of health like this. Uh, he's partially resistant to bleed, but bleed is still an excellent choice. Otherwise, Frost Grease, Dragon Moon Grease, stuff like that. Um, take off. I'll probably pop both of those, to be honest. And then uh, take these off. Uh, what else do I want to do before this fight? There's something I was thinking of doing. I'm just forgetting about all of a sudden. Oh, yes, yes, perfume bubbles. So. Uh, we're going to go into crafting. We haven't used these much until now, but a couple of these are going to be incredibly useful. Um, in particular, this one. Uplifting Aromatic. Boosts ally attack power, reduces incoming damage once. This gives us a bubble that will prevent one hit of damage, no matter how hard. Very similar to that uh, of the Opaline Bubble Tier in our flask. So, I'm going to suggest you load up on these. You should have plenty of mats. We've been saving them for a while. And the main reason being that this is going to give us both an attack power boost and once he starts doing his crazy lasers and you're like, oh god, and you're just, you know, rolling and avoiding them and trying to save your life, you can pop one of these and that way if you do get hit, you're at least going to survive one hit. So, fun little, uh, fun little thing to have. But anyway, whenever you're ready, go on and lie down. And I'm actually going to let this one play out because it's a super cool cutscene. See, Furumazula has been restored to its previous pre rumbling self. What awaits us is none other than the dragon that lives beyond time. Look at the body, you'll actually notice it used to have a third head, but uh, the head's just missing. But yes, giant 
Three-headed dragon. Essentially, we're, we're fighting King Ghidorah here, which is part of why I love this fight so much. I mean, look at it just sitting there, and you're like, what is that? It's such an ominous, amazing feeling. Uh, so anyway, like I said, Tish is going to be great here. Uh, we're going to actually... Blood Flame Blade would be really good for me here, probably. Put that on. What am I doing? I don't need you. I need you. Let's do it. You can see where the third head used to be. Uh, the lightning, you're obviously familiar with this by now. Just watch out for it. He's going to do another roar. Just like this enemy close this time. Here is saving us. Oh my god, he hurts so bad. General rule of thumb, anytime the music stops, you need to get the hell away. I'll run back from that. Man, my Tish is not doing too hot. So when he disappears, just keep your eyes on the sky. We're gonna see a cloud. There it is. And you wanna roll. Oh, uh. Tish did not manage to dodge it. But we did. It's okay. You can see the cloud. That thing will do a ton of damage if it connects. It's like one of the main things you really need to look out for. Come on, no, no, no. Don't do the flyaway thing, you little shit. Well, whatever. I'll put on another one. Let's keep going. No, 
no, no, no, no, get behind him. There we go. That was actually good. It came down to the wire. We managed to show off uh, all of his abilities. You saw the laser, you saw the, the music fades, and he does the big explosion. Pretty good fight. Um, so that, what I was mentioning, though, I don't even finish my thought because I started going off about how much I love Dragonlord. But uh, later on when we finish uh, Millicent's questline, and this is mainly for people that already accepted the Lord of Frenzy but don't want to be locked into that ending, when you come to the arena here, you can use Millicent's Needle and it will purge away the Flame of Frenzy's influence. So this area is obviously quite useful to have. Anyway... Uh, from here, just hop back on over to beside the Great Bridge. There's a couple other things that we're going to do in this area. Okay. Also going to spend all those runes I got. Oh, da -da 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 Mind. Let's see, I want to make sure I have enough FP to summon like anyone that I would want to ever summon. Uh, 132 is Tish. Right now, it's it's because it's buffed. Is that forty thousand short or something? I think Lord Runes are fifty. Yeah. Thirty-six. Okay, that is enough. I don't think there's anyone beyond Tish. I think Tish is the most expensive. 100, 122, 124, yeah, 132, so, and obviously my FP is boosted right now, but that's, that was the goal, is I wanted to get that high enough, so, we are done leveling mind, but anyway, head on up here, and then we're gonna head on over this way, there is a uh, dragon dude up there, we'll get to him in a little bit, don't worry about him, now we're gonna go over here, and get you another legendary talisman, and the final legendary armament. Also done with dragons, so we can take that off. I'm gonna keep the meat on. You never know when you could use some exalted flesh. Let's actually craft some up too. There we go. Uh, this one. Kill him. Uh, let's see, one beast by the stairs, one around corner by a somber eight. Ah, yes, this corner. So there's a bunch of them that look like they're dead. Just hit lock on and you'll see the one that's alive. Him out. Grab the somber eight. And then hit on down. So pretty much as soon as you start approaching this, you should get invaded by Recusant. Don't go inside yet, because there are Beastmen in there, and we don't want to deal with them until after we've handled the invasion. So taking him down is going to get you access to the full armor set, the Blasphemous Claw, and the Devourer Scepter. Uh, now right now, to do, let me just check our weapons, Crafter Blade, Night and Flame, Ruins, Marius, Dark Moon, Bolt, Eclipse, Devourer Scepter, and Golden Order. So we now have all legendary armaments, and you'll notice that the achievement did not pop. Uh, that's something going on with 1.03. There's a couple workarounds that we can do, and we're going to address those when we leave these, this area. So. Rest assured, you have all the legendary armaments at this point. We just need to get it to not be buggy.
And then going on in here. This is one of the legendary talismans that we need. The old board talisman. Which is uh, a pretty good item for a couple of builds. That's going to increase the duration of applied buffs. So, you know, it's a, I believe it's a 50% boost, which is pretty significant. Um, you know, but obviously, if you're taking up whole talisman slot, you need to have a very, very buff-centric build. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth using. But anyway, we got one of these dudes. Y'all are familiar with them by now. This is the uh, last one we'll see. Let me get the armor off of killing this one, so... Let's see if we got Rodham. There we go. So now that he's rotted, he's really bad at this. You can probably just like sit back at this point and let him just kind of die. that but apparently not oh no come on buddy damn that shield throw man swap and almost got killed. Need to stop trying to swap. I died of this asshole. So for taking him out, we get the full Malform Dragon set. Uh, now, as I already mentioned, we do not want to fight Malakath just yet. Fighting Malakath is going to... Well, fighting and beating Malakath is going to cover the entire capital city in Ash. And so what that means is that all of these graces, everything that's over here, you are going to lose access to. Which, on that note, there's like a smithing five I forgot. I'm just going to go grab it real fast. It'll take like half a second. Um, and that'll give me a chance to talk about this. So, a couple things happen when the, the capital goes to Ash. Uh, the round table hold is, basically, it's just emptied out. So, there's almost nothing there anymore. Um, Gideon is no longer our friend. And that's another one of the reasons, is, as you noticed, as we've been talking to Gideon, we've been able to pick up a bunch of loot. You know, we're like, hey, we found the Lord of Blood. And he's like, great, have a present. And then we're like, hey, we found McKella. And he's like, great, have a present. So he also gives us something if we talk to him after beating Millennia. So because of that, we want to take out Millennia first before we go ahead and try to tackle um, before we, we, we beat uh, Malekith because we're going to get that final spell. And it is really nice. It's one of those super fortification spells and it's going to allow us to uh, mitigate out holy damage by a huge amount. And considering the final boss of the game uses holy, you know, for anybody that can use the spell, it's obviously going to be a huge boon to have that because you're going to shut down a ton of the incoming damage on those fights. So I would not suggest doing Malakath just yet. Um, 
I think that Millennia is probably harder than Malekith. Yeah, right over here there's a smithing five. I missed it when we were talking to Gold Mask and all that. Um, but I do think Millennia is, is harder than Malekith. But regardless, we are going to save him. Um, so, you know, make sure. Because that's that's one of the few conditions that could cause you to miss your Platinum. Is not getting the Bolt of Granxis here before the capital is covered in ash. Uh, but anyway, let's work back to the round table hold. Uh, we're going to talk about fixing that achievement. So one thing people have been saying works is if you just like drop it, pick it up, put it into your inventory, and then do an upgrade, that might fix it. And the other is just dropping the items and picking them back up. But this is a known bug right now. I mean, tons and tons and tons of people are oh, having shit. an experience or uh, having an issue with this. So put an upgrade in it. If you're dropping any weapons, make sure you do leave and not discard. That didn't work. Let's go over and yank them all out. Because so I know this is the, uh, I know these are the eight weapons, so. Let me see. Um, there's another thing about this and how it's bugged right now. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, patch 1.04 is broken it. So report the following. Make sure you have all weapons in your inventory to pop the trophy. Okay, so let's do that. Let's pull them all out and see if that will fix it. Uh, so in particular, we had that. We have Night and Flame. Oh, see, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's been buggy. But yeah, so just pulling one back. But just to go through them, of course, Night and Flame... Uh, Devour Receptor. Um, do, 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 do. Golden Order Greatsword. Dark Moon Greatsword. It's four. Five is Crafted Blade. Six is Ruins. Seven is the Eclipse Shuttle. Uh, and then eight would be the Devour Receptor, which we just added in. And those are. Uh, oh, hang on. Nine. Bolt of Grand Six. So, real fast, I want to talk about this because there, there also seems to be some confusion regarding certain items. Um, do, 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 do. Where's one at? I'm trying to find one. That's a good example. That's an example of one. That's an example of one. I think the other... I think that might also have the border. So, n there's more than just legendary items that have a gold border when you pick them up. So if I leave a couple of these on the ground. Let's see, that one's blue. That one is gold. Black knife is also gold. But despite that, if we look at them, there's nothing in this description that says it's a legendary. So basically the gold doesn't mean like, hey, it's legendary. It can also apply to things that are just unique. But so, you know, if anybody's telling you like, hey, actually you need to get the, the black knife or the God Slayer's greatsword. No, that's that's incorrect it's not true um, as you saw we just had to shift things back to our inventory and then the achievement popped for us um, anyway with that done let's go over here let's talk about Plast du Sax's remembrance because oh man this one's a pretty hard choice you've done what you I am a do as you know you <laughs> you'd okay. we have new equipment now the veteran stuff having the all out and by the way at this point in the game like honestly just buy all of it why not you never know when you're going to want to use this stuff so oh we ran out of runes that's okay we'll have a lot of runes before you go to new game plus just buy this inventory out um so two big choices here the dragon king's crag blade which is pretty crazy the thundercloud form is that move that he used when he went up in the air and kind of swooped around his lightning and then came crashing down uh very strong weapon art. Uh, you catch somebody with it in PvP, it's going to almost one-shot them. Uh, it can be dodged, obviously, but it's it's very scary to, to come against this thing, for sure. Um, the other is my personal favorite spell in the game, Placidus Axe's Ruin. Uh, this thing is absolutely crazy. It's the laser breath he was doing during the fight. You can cast it mid-jump, and what's so phenomenal about this ability is when you jump up and cast it, or if you're on the ground, whatever the case is, when you use it, there is a giant aura that's going to explode around you with red lightning. So, like, just instantly off the bat, you're getting, like, a 1,500 damage instant AoE that knocks anything around you onto the ground, usually. 
and then there's going to be three separate lasers. The laser is going to sweep to the side, and then sweep back, and then it's going to sweep straight, like from down to up to hit the target. Um, I mean, it, it's a really cool spell. It is a really, really cool spell. This character isn't a caster, so I may get the... I may actually pick up that blade just to see... Uh, just to see how it works on a quality build. I want to say it's deck scaling. Let me see. Pull up a list on it. I think leveled up. Because if it's quality, I would like to have a thrusting weapon. Uh, let's see. Leveled up, you are D and B. So you are more dexterity. But that's fine. I could use another dex weapon. Let me, let me pop some runes. I'll buy it. I'm convinced myself. <laughs> With my, my dialogue about how cool it is. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That sounds like a pretty cool weapon. Maybe I'll get that. I mean, I haven't bought one the entire game, you know? I gotta get at least one thing from them. From one of the remembrances. Um, let's see. So, we're saving Maliketh. Um, to do, 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 do other stuff that we should do. Well, actually, let me go level up that crag blade. I'll see what the damage looks like on my build. I only have seven. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go for it just yet. 665. And you're 670 and you're 675. That's actually pretty damn good. Oh, yeah, why not? I don't usually use thrusting swords, but if I was ever going to use one, this is a pretty freaking badass one. Wow, 723. That's actually like that's intense. If I was to respec and go uh go deep into the uh Wait, can I? I think I can. I might be able to poke from behind my shield with this too, which would be great. Um, anyway, we want to go do Jarbairn. So hop on over to Jarberg. We should be able to continue his quest line now as well, since Alexander's wrapped up. His quest line is a little goofy to me. The the exact conditions. Oh, I can. I can shield poke from behind my great shield with this. That's awesome. The ultimate in pokes. But I wish we Alright, so he's still doing that. Let me see. Is he supposed to have uh supposed to have moved by now? Go talk to Dialos. Because Dialos is already here. And those are the two dialogues we're waiting on. Is Char Baron talking about how he wishes that uh, Dialos was stronger, and Dialos talking about, you know, don't pity him. And with those two pieces of dialogue, this place should advance. It might be similar to uh, Stormvale, where it's bugged. We might just have to rest time to force it to advance. Can't wait to try out my thrust and sword. Let's see what past time. Let's see if that helps. As the little dude should move to the middle of the road. He's still not moving. Let's try passing more time. Okay, he's moved finally. Yeah, see I was looking up there. He's not up there, which means that we're good. Oh, I'm glad you came. But we're fine now. So, I won't cry though. The tale of household. That's the kind of warrior I would, even if I'm scared. Ah, uh, uh, the jars. <clears throat> then all is well. This fool proved his worth in the end. Dun dun dun. Set it again. The tale of hats, the kind one who protects him. The tale of hats, the kind one who protects. 
Okay, and we'll reset it one more time, and this should wrap it up. Because we needed the Alexander Innards item that we got from beating Alexander in a duel. And it looks like he's moved, which is exactly what we wanted. So, Dialysis Mask, the other Hoslo Petal Whip. So now you got double bleed whips if you want them. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I've been thinking as a worry. Wow. Insight from Uncle. <sighs> Thank you. I'm a worry. I can really. I understand. Strong enough. I don't think I'll. Worry. Goodbye. And thanks for. I'll never forget. I'll never. Okay. And then we're going to reload again. And that wraps up that quest line. If we're doing all of that, we get the companion jar, which honestly you're probably never going to use, but it increases the potency of throwing pots and throwing jars and whatnot. So kind of a fun little gimmicky thing. Uh, but yeah, wow. Glad we made this its own episode because that was a lot to cover. Uh, but we're going to wrap things up here. As for our next episode, we are heading on into the Halic Tree. So, Halic Tree is also quite long. Probably going to take, uh, my guess is three to four episodes to get through all of that. And then after the Halic Tree, we're going to go to the Round Table Hold, talk to the dude to get our final spell. And then after that, we do Malakath and the Burnt Capital and the final bosses. And we're, we're in the home stretch. Like, we're almost there. We are. Platinum is just barely out of reach. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll have more coming your way soon enough.